In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of Peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I'd like to begin by reading a quote from Pope Saint Pius, uh, Pope Pius XI. And Pope Pius XI says, Whoever studies the annals of the Catholic Church diligently will easily discover, bound up with every record of Christianity, the powerful patronage of the Virgin Mother of God. In public misfortune, as well as in private need, the faithful of every epoch beseechingly turn to Mary, that in her goodness she might succor them, obtaining for them from God help and relief in their needs of soul and body. And her most powerful help was never awaited in vain by those who implored her with devout, trusting prayers. We're reminded by the Pope's words that there's been a golden thread amongst the Christian faithful throughout history, and that is the thread of Our Lady. That from the earliest days of the Church, the faithful have turned to Mary for help, for protection, for intercession that Our Lady truly has been from the earliest days a mother to all those who have come to follow her son as our Lord entrusted to her the disciple John and all those who would would be his disciples. Women, behold your son, that Mary truly is a mother. And the more that we recognize her as a mother, the greater confidence we'll have in our life at her maternal help and intercession. That we must recognize that Our Lady is constantly looking upon us, watching over us and interceding for us, of interceding above all for graces and giving us graces to help us on our earthly pilgrimage to heaven. And we should have great confidence that no matter what we go through, our Blessed Mother is there watching over us, interceding us, and protecting us. But we must turn to her. We must ask her intercession. We must beg her to pray for us before the throne of God, because her prayers are most powerful before God. When we pray, we pray as creatures who are are indebted. When Mary prays, she prays with authority. She prays as a mother. And Jesus never refuses his mother. He never says no to her. St. Alphonsus Liguori calls Mary the prayer omnipotent. We know that only God can do all things by his power. But St. Alphonsus says, Mary can do all things by her prayers. So powerful are her prayers before God. And we see this even in Scripture at the wedding feast of Cana, when Mary simply turned to her son and said, They have no wine. Already, that's an indication of how attentive our Blessed Mother is, how watchful she is of our needs. That she she recognized somehow that the wine was beginning to run short. And she turns to her son and says, they have no wine. And what happened happens next is quite marvelous. Our Lord says, woman, what does this have to do between you and I? My hour has not yet come. And then Our Lady speaks with authority once again. She says to the servers, Do whatever he tells you. Our Lady knew what her son was saying. He was saying, Mother, if I do this miracle, 
It will begin my public ministry and will begin my path to Calvary and to my death. Our Lady in saying, do whatever he tells you, was giving her son permission to begin that path that would lead him to Calvary. But it shows how great Our Lady's intercession is that Jesus on this occasion worked his first miracle, public miracle, and it was wi and from this miracle his disciples began to believe. Some of the fathers of the church go f so far as to say perhaps this miracle was not even part of God's plan, but it shows that even God is willing to change his plans for Mary. So great is her intercession. God will seldom never say no. And we should have confidence in our Blessed Mother's intercession. As when we pray the Memorari, that beautiful prayer written by St. Bernard, never has it been known that anyone who fled to thy protection was left unaided. Never has anyone turned to the Blessed Mother in vain. Never has anyone turned to her and not left with some grace, some sign of her, of her, of her maternal assistance and help. That Our Lady always consoles those who are in need, strengthens them, encourages them, and like a mother, shows them that path to go forward in following her son. When Our Lady appeared at Fatima, I mentioned earlier, World War I was raging, and Portugal was involved in World War I. And Our Lady said twice, at least twice it's recorded, she told the children, Tell the people to pray the rosary for the war to end. Tell the people to pray the rosary for the war to end. And then she said, and then she said, just lost my marker. Continue to say the rosary every day for peace for the world and the end of the war, for she alone can save it. Our Lady said that. She says, continue to say the rosary every day in honor of Our Lady the Rosary, for only she can save it, showing how powerful Our Lady is through the prayer of the rosary to intercede that she can stop wars and bring wars to an end. And uh, uh, the Pope uh, Pius re reminded us that there's the famous Battle of Lepanto in which the Turkish Muslim fleet was going to invade Christian Europe to destroy Christendom. And the Christian fleet was very small in compared to the huge fleet of the Turks. And the Pope had everyone pray the rosary. And by a miracle of Our Lady's intercession, the Christians were victorious. And this was something that uh, from physical appearance could not have been possible. But it shows again the power of the rosary. The Pope was thousands of miles away in Rome at a meeting. When the battle was won, he stood up by a divine, by divine inspiration and he said, the Christians have won the war. The Christians have won. And sure enough, a few days later, messengers arrived with the news that the Christian fleet won. From this battle, the Pope declared the Feast of Our Lady of Victories and the Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary. Uh, this is where we get the Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary is because of this famous battle in which the Muslims were going to in, inter, in, invade Christian Europe and destroy it. And so we see from historical proof the power of the rosary, that the rosary is a weapon of great, of, uh, of, of great intervention. And I am always never get tired of sharing the story of the seven, uh, seven Jesuits in Nagasaki. There were seven Jesuits in Nagasaki when the atom bomb was dropped on that city during World War II. They were eight blocks away from ground zero. 
Everyone in that vicinity was basically disintegrated, evaporated. There were no survivors. And people who survived the bomb died very quickly from radiation, from cancer, from the radiation of the bomb. And people even further out from where the bomb was dropped uh, became sick and died. All seven Jesuits, as I said, they were, they were basically in, the, in the, the ground zero area of where the bomb was dropped. They were physically unharmed. Nothing happened to them when the bomb was dropped. And even more stupendous, none of them got sick from cancer or radiation. None of them ever got sick and the scientists studied them and did tests on them to try to figure out why did they not get, get affected by the bomb. Well the superior told us, the superior told the world when he said, we were praying the rosary and living, he said specifically, we were living the message of Fatima. We were living the message of Fatima. We were praying the rosary. What is the message of Fatima? It's Our Lady's Immaculate Heart turning us back to God. Our, Lady, Our Lady's Immaculate Heart changing our hearts from our sinful nature to become immaculate like hers. Pure, faithful, obedient, evermore desiring to do the will of God. The message of Fatima is a message of conversion that Our Lady calls us to be converted. And one of my uh, favorite quotes from Fatima is, uh, there were some people there asking Our Lady for favors. And Our Lady said, they were asking for favors. And and they were asking for Our Lady's favors. And she says, Some I will, do you wish, to, uh, Lucia said to her, Do you wish to grant these favors that people are asking for? And Our Lady responded, Some I will, others I will not. They must amend their lives, ask forgiveness for their sins, offend not our Lord any more. And then Our Lady's countenance, Lucia said, changed. It became very grave, for he is already much offended. And so we have to ask ourselves, have we tried to change our life? Are we trying to amend our life and root out sin from our life? Are we asking God to forgive us our sins by going to confession? Are we striving to console the heart of Jesus by being faithful to him and living that imitation of the heart of Mary and striving to love him in all that we do. Our Lady reminds us that perhaps when our prayers are not answered, it's because we're, we are not living the life of grace. We're not changing our life and striving to overcome sin and we still offend our Lord. And so we're reminded that God wants us and God's mother wants us to be converted daily by living our faith, Catholic faith heroically and striving to avoid sin. We live in a world which thinks there's no such thing as sin and the world is becoming like a cesspool of sin. We see the vomit of Satan all around us, the immorality, the godlessness, the rejection of all that is holy, and we're supposed to accept what is sinful as normal. No. We must never become complacent. We must never accept sin. We must never say what this world is saying is normal, is acceptable before God. Sin is sin, and it will always be sin. Be it abortion, contraception, premarital relations, people of the same sex living together, or same sex marriage, it's sin. And those who refuse to obey God's laws will be damned. They will go to hell forever. God will not be mocked. And we must be courageous in this time, not being afraid to preach the truth and live the truth, even if we suffer for it. Already many Christians are suffering 
because they refuse to accept that which is 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 sinful in being made is being being uh, called normal that you're being accused of uh, bigotry it's not bigotry and so we're reminded today our lady's immaculate heart is counting on us to be faithful to be converted to follow her son but we need to be close to the heart of Mary we need to stay near to her heart in order that we might not be infected by the mentality of this sinful world this world which rejects the commandments which rejects Christ and his teachings it rejects the authority of Christ we must be faithful by living that Fatima message and praying the rosary and and imitating Our Lady's heart Our Lady's heart is our refuge from the vomit of this world that we turn to Mary Blessed Mother, help me to be faithful in following your Son. Help me to be heroic in living my Catholic faith. Help me to be courageous in standing for the truth and not being fearful to defend the teachings of God, the teachings of Christ, and His Church which He founded. Grant me the grace, above all, that I might love God with and through your heart. God's plan through this beautiful devotion of the Immaculate Heart of Mary is that all our hearts are converted and changed. And what a world it would be if everyone's heart was like the heart of Mary, and that every heart would need and acknowledge the authority of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. May our Blessed Mother grant us the grace above all to trust her as our mother, and that we give ourselves ever more faithfully to her to lead us on that path of loving and serving her Son, Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.